Hey guys, and what's going on? Tyraku here. I uh, hope everyone's doing great. Let me get my notes pulled up real quick. Um, today, I got a video that I want to share with you guys that would have been very, very different if I would have made this several months back. Probably would not even have had to make this video, to be honest, because several months ago, back when I started playing Raid, we used to have fusions where you would have to use champions who were already in the game. So it was heavily, heavily stressed that, hey, if you pull this champion, you don't want to get rid of them. You want to keep a unique copy of them. So, for example, if you already had, say, a um, Umbral Enchantress, all right, you already had it at level 60, you got another one, you would want to keep her, okay? Because if the fusion came around, you would use her in the fusion, like she was used in a fusion before, and you'd play it safe like that. Same thing with Sky Touched or any of these other champions. But with Plarium's recent changes, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the way it's going to be consistently for the future, it could change. Keep that in mind. It always could change. But how the fusions are going now is it's all based on new champions or it's fragment fusions. So with that said, people are beginning to more so get rid of their duplicate champions. So if you already have one champion built up, you're just getting rid of your other champions. And while that's not always a bad situation, I did get a message a few days ago, somebody talking about whether they should keep a champion or not, so on and so forth. And here's my opinion. Before we get into the five champions, the five specifically void champions, you should 100% or most likely consider at least keeping and possibly building because they do have value if you build them as duplicates. All right. So a few days ago, got messaged asking about should I keep or should I get rid of my champions that are like three star, my four star epics, so on and so forth. The champions who I probably will never use, should I keep them or should I get rid of them? And the number one thing I can think of is it's easier to level a champion to four stars than it is to actually pull a new copy of that four star champion. So it's a lot easier to take a Armager or something like that from two stars, level them up, get them to four stars, than it is to continually pull your shards until you get, say, a Rector Drath or a Rearguard Sergeant, because that's RNG. The other ones you can control, this one's RNG. So keep that in mind before you start going and feed your champions. Now, there are some situations where obviously you can feed your champions, but it's up to each individual person on what's best for their account. But here are five void champions that I would definitely at least consider keeping and building duplicates of. The very first one is a champion who you're definitely going to keep duplicates of, at least two of her, maybe even more. That is Coldheart, all right? So Coldheart is known far and wide to be one of the best and probably, she probably is the best and most used void rare champion, in my opinion at least throughout a lot of the game, okay? So you literally can use her from the moment you get her very early on the game, if you actually do get her. My other account has gone um, the entire 270 day login or whatever and never got a cold heart. But whenever you get cold heart, I can almost guarantee that you can use her as soon as you get her and you'll use her until the end game. She's actually in my Fire Knight team. She's in my Spider team. Not just one of them, but two of them are in both teams. So if you get cold hearts, definitely keep them, definitely keep duplicates. It's worth building at least two, possibly even three, especially with the changes on the AI for Fire Knight. Three is potentially even a solid idea. Now, more than that, you could keep them if you wanted to, build them different ways, but two at least, especially considering Cold Hearts are typically built in fairly similar ways, deal damage, high accuracy, but you could always keep more than two, no problem, but definitely keep at least two. Don't feed them too quickly. The next champion is Bellower. Bellower is yet again another void rare champion who's known to be a very good champion however the reason why i'm recommending that you possibly keep two of them is because ogren tribe faction wars is a fairly difficult faction war to complete if you don't have some of the crucial key champions in the faction to kind of help your team sustain control the waves so on and so forth so for me champions like shatterbones champions like ugo champions like man eater all those champions help me out a ton in progression but if you're not in a situation where you have these possibly harder to get champions than a champion like Bellower, who is a void rare, so he's difficult to get because of being a void, but you may have duplicates of him, then you could consider building one of them, say for damage, this high crit rate, high crit damage, a lot of speed. You can even use him as your campaign farmer. And then maybe consider building the second one in something like a stun set, something like an accuracy set, because Bellower does have some pretty good debuffs. I and mean, we have decreased attack, decreased defense, we have decreased speed. He has AOE abilities on all of his abilities, so he works amazing in a stun set. Stun set, you don't actually need accuracy, but you may not have enough damage to put the Bellower in the stun set and 
build them out for accuracy at the same time. So it's definitely a solid idea to keep two of them, if for nothing else other than faction wars. The other option is one could be your campaign farmer specifically, and maybe the other one you use in a different area where you need the CCs because the crowd control effects, which is the, the cooldowns here, the block cooldowns, decrease speed, um, and so on and so forth. So if you want to land as debuffs, may want to build them with accuracy, so on, maybe put them in a stun set. Your campaign farmer is most likely just going to be either very, very fast or very, very high in damage, and his stats may not translate to other areas of the game very well. So definitely consider keeping Bellower as a duplicate champion who's definitely worth investing in, especially if you're not very plentiful, I guess, on these Ogren tribe members, because the faction wars will prove to be a little difficult. Now, the next champion is possibly... One of my favorite champions, I think I've already given it away by clicking on this faction. Obviously, it's not going to be Whisper. I don't even know if I'd build one of her, to be honest, but Skullcrown. Skullcrown is a champion where you can build two of them. You can build three of them. You can build 13 of them. There's so many varieties, so much variety, and so many different ways you can build Skullcrown. It's incredible. So for me specifically, I did a video on it not too long ago, which I'll link it around somewhere in this video if you guys want to check it out. But you can build Skullcrown and make 100% perfect sense from it by putting her in avenging gear, throwing her in arena, letting her go in your defensive team, maybe a go second team or something like that, and allowing her to be just purely counterattack, okay? So avenging has a higher chance to counterattack whenever hit with a crit, and it doesn't got any doesn't have, sorry, doesn't have any damage reduction from the counterattack whereas like retaliation sets, regular counterattack, you do get your damage reduced from that actual counterattack hit. Avenging gear, there's no damage reduction, so she hits just as hard whenever she's counterattacking from that. Obviously, if you're going to build her like that, build her slow, very high attack, very high crit rate, or 100% crit rate, very high crit damage, possibly resistance. I, like I said, I have the video going over the whole build. The other one option, possibly even two options, is you could build her for a blender team, which uses an ally attack champion. You would build a skull crown like that, pretty slow, very high attack, very high crit damage, probably in savage gear, cruel gear, so on and so forth. Or you could build one that is speed tuned to your regular arena team. And that's how I use my arena nuker for a very long time. I had her about 225 speed, 230 speed ish. I had her about 250% crit damage, about 5,000 attack. And I had her speed tuned the rest of the team and she was in savage gear. So skull crown is definitely a champion. If you pulled her during this two X void that's going on right now, definitely keep one of them. Do not feed the second. Honestly, I'd be hesitant to feed any of them until you know for sure you don't want to do it. Because the worst feeling is when you decide you want to build a champion, in my case, Seeker, a while back, and I accidentally fed a duplicate copy of him. But the worst feeling is when you want to build a champion, you see a cool idea and you really want to build a new one because you don't want to mess up your, your currently used one. And you go to check it, you're like, oh, I know I had this duplicate champion. And you don't actually have the duplicate champion. So definitely Skull Crown is one that you may regret, especially since she's not a super frequently pulled champion. Besides the fact she's a Void Epic, I feel like she has a lesser drop rate than other champions, which it could just be my assumption since she's a champion a lot of people look for. And typically when you're looking for a certain thing, you seem to not know you seem to notice more when it doesn't happen. So that may just be the situation. But either way, definitely a champion worth saving. Next up, I want to talk about Basher. And Basher's situation is going to be kind of the same thing as Bellower, where you may have one where you want to build him for like Arena. Just basically two different builds, okay? And you don't really want to switch the gear back and forth, especially with the silver costs in this game. They're pretty ridiculous, all right? So if you have one Basher for the Arena, that Basher may be super high accuracy, pretty fast, but he may not do as good as you would like for him to do in Faction Wars or a different area of the game. A lot of times the arena builds and the other builds can translate, but for Basher, you may consider building a second one because you could put him in stun set. Stun set on Basher is very, very good because he has a, an essentially an AOE ability here, attacks multiple people, most likely. I mean, it could attack one person four times, which is perfectly fine, but attacks four times at random, places the block buffs, and this ability too, attacks all enemies, increases the cooldown of all of the target's skills by two turns. So you could essentially even have two bashers staggering this ability and keeping the enemy's cooldowns on cooldown basically the entire match. So this ability does require accuracy. It does not get affected by block debuffs. So if the enemy's running block debuffs, you can apply this perfectly fine. However, for the block buffs to apply, they do have to, well, not have a block debuffs ability already on the enemy team. So this ability is very, very good, but building one basher maybe in the stun set, in that case, he wouldn't have to be very high accuracy. 
if you wanted to land this every now and then, you could build him to a level of accuracy where it's like high enough to land this frequently, but not so high where he's going to be landing it in the arena. Whereas if you built an arena basher, you're probably not going to be able to build him in a stun set because you likely won't be able to get the high enough levels of accuracy to land against teams who are running more of a resistance type team or at least have some resistance built. Most of the time, Arena, well, even Doom Tower now, Doom Tower starting to scale up in resistance. Arena and Doom Tower both have a higher accuracy threshold to meet because the resistance of the enemies are a lot higher. So definitely two solid options. Stun set has the benefit of not needing accuracy to land the set effect. So the stun from the set, but you do still need the accuracy to land your abilities. So Basher, solid champion, definitely consider possibly building a second one or at least not feeding one if you have two of them. Now the th last champion, so the fifth champion, I almost said third champion, I need to learn how to count apparently. So the last champion is a champion I actually pulled in my um, void shards yesterday. I pulled about 100 void shards and I did get this champion. She's a duplicate for me and I'm definitely going to keep her. That is Madame Saris. Now, Madame is not a champion where you would necessarily build differently for the arena w versus like dungeons in the campaign. Maybe the speed tune would be a little bit different, but Madame is always going to be built fast with a lot of accuracy, and she doesn't really have a whole lot to like vary from that build. However, if you use Madame in the arena, it makes sense, and you could definitely justify building her with an immunity set, and then one without an immunity set. Especially with so many of the new champions like Yoshi, champions like Claude, Beast Feeder, um, Pestilist, all those champions who are able to increase accuracy, it's giving Madame more and more, I guess, versatility. So you could build a Madame in immunity gear and not have to run her as high of accuracy because you could run her alongside those champions who boost her accuracy by 50%. Whereas your original Madame, you may want to run her closer to 700 accuracy if possible, and you don't have to worry about running that increased accuracy champion. So it really all just depends on what your arena team is looking like. You could definitely make sense of using two Madames. That's with a lot of arena champions, to be honest, but Madame especially. I mean, she's one of the top tier void champions. She's one of the top tier champions in general in the game absolutely amazing champion but if you're pulling two of them especially if you're early to mid game somewhere around there even towards a later game and you pull a second one of them you may think hmm, i don't really have any reason to build a second one the one seems like plenty well don't feed her because she seems to be also a very difficult very very difficult void epic to pull so definitely keep her in your vault save her for a time later down the future like i said at the beginning of the video it's much easier to farm up a four-star champion than it is to feed a four-star champion you already have. So hopefully these five champions I just went over, hopefully this saves you from feeding a champion who you will later on find out, hey, I could have used that champion and I really hate that I fed him. So hopefully you don't feel the same way I did when I fed my seeker that I had a duplicate of and then come to find out I actually wanted one for Bat Eater Clan Boss and one for the arena. However, I only have one now. I'm using him in Clan Boss. I mean, I'm using not in Clan Boss. I'm using him in the arena. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this video helps you out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.